Welcome. This is Al Wounds Jr.'s Youth Center Parent Power Group. Today, we have uh, a presentation of breast and cervical cancer prevention by Aranda Jordan, PhD, community health worker, uh, California Health Collaborative. And she told me to say, She's still working on her PhD, but girl, you got this. Right? <laughs> Thank you. you got it. So I'm going to give you a little background on the Al Wooten Jr. Uh, Center. And the Al Wooten Jr. Center is a nonprofit. It was founded by Myrtle Fay Rump in 1990 in honor of her son, who was killed in a drive-by shooting. The center provides free after-school summer programs for students in grades three to 12 in South, South Los Angeles. This program is sponsored uh, and the workshops in partnership with the Green Foundation and other donors, which can be found at the Wooten.org donor work, uh, our website. Uh, we have a couple of other workshops coming up and that will be on our website also uh, next uh, week, uh, job hunt hunting for felons. Uh, and then after that, finding treasure at the Los Angeles library. Uh, in addition, we do have COVID-19 vaccines available. Uh, Pfizer, Pfizer, Moderna and Janssen will be available at the Wooten Center. Uh, two Fridays, we had started last Friday, August 13th, and the next Friday will be September 3rd. There are additional uh, vaccine sites. Uh, you can check our website for additional information. And right now, it is my pleasure to present Arneda Jordan, Community Health Worker, California Health Collaborative. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Alberta. Hello, everyone. It is so nice to see everyone on, on Zoom. I'll, I'm glad that we're finally getting back to being in person. Um, I am going to share my screen. I was reviewing my PowerPoint, so y'all might see that I was going through it. Um, and no problem. As she shares her screen, if everybody that signs in could put your name and your zip code for uh, recording purposes for our donor foundation. Thank All right. you. All right. So hello, everyone. Once again, my name is Arnidra Jordan and I'm a community health worker for the um, Every Woman Counts program, which is a program here in Los, Los Angeles, California. And it's also a program that's ran by the state, but I work for the Los Angeles, California part of the program. Okay. So um, does everyone know what cancer is? Does anyone want to put in the chats what they think cancer is? Anybody have any ideas what cancer is? Because we all have our own interpretation about what cancer is. Let me open my chat. And then let me put my name and my zip code. Right. When we hear cancer, a lot of times we hear that it can cause it, it can cause death. What else do we? we um, what else? Sometimes when we uh, talk about cancer, what do we think? So usually, if you hear someone was diagnosed with a cancer, you automatically think they're going to die. But what else do we know? Can cancer be cured? It depends on the type of cancer you have. So, but the good thing is that we have lots of treatments for cancer now and the survival rate is um, longer for most people who are diagnosed with cancer. So what is cancer? Cancer is when cells in the body change and grow out of control. So we see a normal cell and then we see um, the cell changing, and then we see a, on the third slot, on the third box, we see the cell changes again. Then the cell cannot change, cannot um, fix itself, and then the cell makes copies that spread. Yeah. 
So how many people knew that breast cancer is the number one most common cancer in the US and California? In California, number two is prostate, and then number three is lung cancer. And we're seeing an increase in African-Americans with breast cancer and prostate cancer. So what makes people more at risk for breast cancer? What do you think causes breast cancer? Anybody wanna put something in the um, chat about what they think may cause breast cancer? Anybody wanna try? Genetics, diet, um, can't eat McDonald's every day, family history. What else? What else do you think would make you more at risk for breast cancer? Stress, the environment, obesity. I also say our, um, a lot of times if you put all these chemicals in your hair, you might be at more at risk, you know, perms and then you, put the dye on top of the perm. If your hair fall out, that might be true, okay? So um, two main risk factors for breast cancer is having breast and female hormones and getting older. And getting older is something that we cannot change. As much as we would like to, as much as we want to find the fountain of youth, we cannot change getting older. We can pretend that we're 24 and change the numbers, but we cannot change getting older. Having breast and female hormones, we, um, we still can't change the fact that we have female hormones. So um, a lot of times we think like we're not, that breast cancer is an old lady disease that young people can't get breast cancer, but anyone can get breast cancer. Um, our youngest breast cancer patient was six years old, right, Jen? And in LA County, she was six years old. So breast cancer, risk factors that you cannot change, your age, your body, or your family, or personal history of cancer. Breast risk factors that you can change, lack of exercise. We all know that we need to get out and walk at least 30 minutes a day, four to five times a week. And it's supposed to be a brisk walk. I was just reading that. I, I, I'm not a pro. I was just reading that this morning <laughs> from the CDC. They were talking about COVID. And um, if people just exercised a little, um, they would be able to um, fight COVID better. So I know that now. Being overweight, um, drinking alcohol. And when they're talking about drinking alcohol, they don't mean one to two classes a week. They mean if you have two or more glasses of alcohol per day. And yes, that includes wine, two or more per day and smoking, if you smoke. And I just saw uh, the sign that uh, cigarettes are 9.95 plus tax and all these fees. No one ever has to worry about me smoking. I seen it right across the street at the gas station. That was the sale price, by the way, 9.95 for a pack of Newports. I don't need them, okay? So how can you help find cancer early? Be aware of your body. Nobody knows your body like you do. If you see a change in your body, tell your provider. If your provider doesn't listen to you, get a second opinion. Know how your breasts normally look and feel. Everyone's breast looks different. Tell your provider if you see any changes and get regular screenings. Um, our suggestion is that you get your mammograms at age 40 and over once a year, and that you get your, um, you get, um, your clinical exams at age 21 once every year. And we're saying that because things are changing. The environment is changing. What we eat is changing. Um, so now we have to really be aware and take care of ourselves and go to the doctor once a year and make sure that we are taking care of ourselves. Because it used to be you could go every two to three years. No, now you need to go every year because things are changing in the world. So what are some signs and symptoms that someone may have um, breast cancer. Anybody want to take a shot in the chat? I'm trying to, um, oh shoot. I, I, I closed my chat out. 
So anyone know what signs that someone may have who has breast cancer? A lump, Brenda, yes. Discharge from your breast. It could be clear. It could be bloody. It could be pulse. It could turn be green. Um, what else? What if you just aren't feeling good? A rash? Someone told me they just didn't feel well. And um, it was breast cancer. So sometimes we look for what's on the out. And sometimes we need to look inside because her breast cancer was behind her breast. So sometimes nipple turning in, um, swelling in your armpits, yes, because it might be in your lymph nodes. Great job, Robin. Um, sometimes it doesn't show up on tests. Sometimes you don't have any symptoms. What if you have inflammatory breast cancer? Okay, so let's look at some of the signs. The most common sign is a new lump in the breast or armpit. Other signs, swelling of a breast, nipple turning in, flaky or discolored skin, nipple discharge, marks or dimples, pain in the breast, any change in size. If you see any of these, get to your doctor ASAP. Breast exams are typically part of an individual's routine well check. And I always tell people, if your doctor doesn't do something that you think he or she needs to do, ask for it. Say, hey, you know what? I need a breast exam. Hey, I need a mammogram. If they say no, then say, you know what? Go home, email whoever's over them and ask for that breast exam or, or that mammogram. No healthcare provider wants you to go over their head. So they will fix it. They will fix it. Mammograms are the best way to find breast cancer early. So we see the lady getting her mammogram. She's happy. Um, I know a lot of you say that that's not true, that it doesn't look like um, um, roses and smells uh, <laughs> and gravy and smells wonderful. No, but it's uncomfortable only for a second. I'll say uncomfortable for about three minutes. And that is what your breast looks like on the inside. So I know you're not smiling like that in, uh, in conversation, but it's only uncomfortable per breast for three minutes, okay? And we rather have that uncomfortable feeling and let them detect breast cancer early than have to be uncomfortable. And you know your breasts are hurting and you got to hold your breath for three minutes and you're sore because the breast cancer has moved or metastasized to other areas. So get regular mammograms every one to two years when a person is 40 or older. And you can ask for your mammogram because a lot of times they'll say, oh, you don't need a mammogram till you're 50. Get your mammogram every year. You're entitled to one free mammogram through your insurance company every year, beginning at the age of 40. Get your mammogram. If a person has any new changes to their breasts, and then you and your provider can talk and decide um, how often you should get a mammogram. Um, you can ask your provider, but know your body, know what's going on in your body, and just take care of yourself. Do your mammogram on your birthday every year. Do your, um, get your girlfriends together and everybody do their mammogram the same day and then go out and celebrate. Have a party, but get your mammogram every year because it can and will save your life. So are there any questions about breast cancer screenings and early detection? Are there any questions? Does anyone have any questions for me? Okay, so I'm going to move to the next slide then if there's no questions for me. So what is cervical cancer? Does anyone know what cervical cancer is? Anybody want to put it in the chat? Tell me what cervical cancer is? Because a lot of times we confuse cervical cancer with other cancers. We, let, we lump all cancers together. And then we start telling people stories about how your aunt died um, <laughs> from this and it's not even the same cancer. <laughs> And you start telling me sharing stories that we really shouldn't be sharing. Yes. So um, anybody know what cervical cancer is? Anybody want to put it in the chat? Am I missing anything? Okay. Cancer of the cervix. 
Great job, Robin. Robin, you've been studying before you came here. Anybody else want to um, tell us? Anybody else have any guests? Okay. So remember, cervical cancer is not cer um, cancer of the um, uterus. It's of the cervix. So where is the cervix? So there, right there is your cervix. It's right above your vulva and your vagina and inside is your cervix. Okay, there is your cervix. So what causes cervical cancer? HPV. Everyone who has contact with other humans will have HPV sometime in their life. HPV is a very common sexually transmitted infection. It's an STI. HPV usually has no signs and goes away on its own. HPV that does not go away can cause cancer. How do you get HPV? HPV is passed from person to person. You can get HPV during any skin to skin, sexual touching, and any type of sex. So there are shots um, that protect against the HPV virus. And um, there's types that cause cancer and genital warts. And they are for both boys and girls. At one time, they were only for girls. And um, there was a big fight. No one wanted to give their girls this shot. Now we see that it is safe and it is um, causing the cervical cancer rates to drop. So you want to make sure that you get your girls and boys vaccinated if they're young between the ages of 11 to 12 and it's okay for ages 9 to 26. So after the age of 26 you can't get the vaccine anymore but it isn't a good idea to go ahead and get it to prevent cervical cancer and I don't know if you guys have seen the commercial but there's a really good commercial that talks about I, um, cancer will not take my child out not cervical cancer now and so um, and it's a good commercial because I tell people with any vaccine, do your own research and um, make sure that you um, do your research, but this is safe and effective and we see that it's saving lives. So it's called the HPV um, vaccine and you can get it, boys and girls can get it, okay? So risk factors for cervical cancer, not having regular exams. So do we know what kind of regular exams I'm talking about? a regular pap smear and regular doctor visits. Make sure that you get regular doctor visits. Sometimes we forget to go to the doctor. Life gets busy. We start taking care of everybody else. Me and Alberta was just talking about how we have to take care of the kids and the dog and the parents. And then we got to take care of ourselves and the husband and then the house and do all the cooking. So by the time we are done, we haven't taken care of ourselves. And we might even have scheduled an appointment and taken everyone else to their doctor's appointments and don't take ourselves. So it's very important that we get regular exams. Um, sex with many partners or without protection, a poor diet. Um, we just talked about poor diets because today I'm having a McDonald's um, orange drink. And so we talked about poor diets, getting older, and smoking. Cervical cancer is easy to treat if cell changes are found early. And how do we do that? Cervical cancer tests during a pelvic exam. So there's a pap test and an HPV test. The pap test is the best way to lower cervical cancer risk. So when you go to the doctor, they do a pap smear, they check your cervical to make sure there are no lesions. If there are lesions, um, they can be removed. Um, and then we, it lowers your risk of having cervical cancer, okay? They look for the abnormalities on your cervix. So don't forget to take care of you. So what do the test results mean? Cell changes that are not cancer are commonly found. HPV tests tell if any abnormal cell growth is from the virus that causes most cervical cancer. So can you, um, does everyone see the cervix, and this is what it looks like normal. Um, here is where it looks like unclear. This is what it looks like abnormally, and this is cancer. And they can remove this cancer 
and you can still have children if they catch it early. Okay. So every woman counts cervical cancer screenings. So Jen, do you want to um, ask everyone to, um, we have some treats for you. Yes, so I will, well, I will after the Q&A for cervical cancer. Okay, so you want to, so you want to wait to the yeah. end? Yeah. So, because yeah. uh, we have some really good treats. I want to take them from you guys. We have really good treats for you. So, Brenda yes. has a, Brenda has a question in the chat box as whether okay. or not HPV and the PAP is the same. So is HPV and you talking about your PAPs um, exam? Is that what you're talking about, Brenda? So HPV is the human papillomas virus and your pap smear is when you go to the OBGYN and, and then they, um, they check your cervix for um, cancer. That's your pap smear. Do you understand? Did I answer your question? Um, yes. Yeah, just okay. Thing. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. So the every woman count cervical cancer screening at age 21, you should get a pelvic exam every year. Age 21 to 30, a pap test every three years if pap results are normal. Age 30 to 65, a pap and an HPV co-test every five years if results are, no, are normal. After age 65, you can discuss screenings with your provider and you and your provider can um, decide what is what works best for you. Okay, and even though we're saying a pap test every three years, if something's not normal, then you need to discuss with your provider about having a pap every other year or every year at age 30. You might not, you might not can get a pap smear every five years in an HP cold test. You might need it every year. You might need it every two years. Once again, always discuss with your doctor what is best for you and know your body. If you think that something is out of alignment in your body, get a new doctor, get a second opinion, fight for your health. So now, are there questions about cervical cancer screening and prevention? Any questions? No questions? Okay, while you think about your questions, I'm gonna drop a link in the chat box before our Nidra continues on to talk a little bit about what our program offers. Um, so if you would do us a favor in the next um, few minutes to fill out the survey, there's a link in the chat box. If you fill out that survey, we are going to pull a couple raffle winners at the end of our Nidra's presentation. We'll be giving out a couple $10 gift cards to Target. My favorite place. Target <laughs> is my favorite place. Me too. Yes. So maybe maybe folks will have some questions now that I gave them time to think about. Right, now that they want to get, um, and they want that Target gift card, yes. So some ways you can reduce your cancer risk. So sometimes I hear people say you can prevent cancer. You can't prevent cancer, but you can reduce your risk. Um, keep a healthy weight. So if you know, um, and everybody's makeup is different, but you have to um, keep a healthy weight. If you're huffing and puffing when you get up off the sofa, you're not at a healthy weight. If you're huffing and puffing when you're sleeping, you're not at a healthy weight. We know eating healthy means that um, I was, I, I seen this this morning too. The USDA is recommending that we have five to seven um, vegetables, fruits and vegetables per day. And um, the reason why they are suggesting that, and it needs to be colorful vegetables and fruit. So meaning you can't just have five to seven green vegetables or five to seven, it needs to be a variety of color on your plate. Um, we need to exercise. And this morning at, on the program I was watching, they said you need to do five days a week, 30 to 45 minutes. They were saying um, you only needed three days, but they're saying that because we as Americans are now even more sedentary because we had to stay at home for 18 months. Um, now, a lot of people are not going to workplace. So when you went to the workplace, at least you got up and you drove your car and 
you had to go walk up across campus or somewhere. Now people are getting out of their bed at 7.50 and walking to their sofa or their desk at, and, and starting work at eight o'clock. So you're not getting the same exercise that um, used to get. And don't smoke. And I'm gonna tell you don't smoke because if you're paying $15 a day for cigarettes, you can invest that money and probably in 20 years have about $300,000. So don't smoke. Have no more than one alcoholic a day. So anything, they considered anything over two drinks a day unhealthy. And it was two eight ounce drinks. So um, the, the doctor made that very specific, two eight ounce drinks. Um, because sometimes we'll get that tall glass and consider that one drink. It's two eight ounce drinks and have safer sex with barrier protection. So what gets in the way of being tested? So anybody want to tell me what has stopped them from going to the doctor? I know money. Money is one one that has stopped people from um, going to the doctor or, or, or being tested. Can anyone else tell me? something else and you can put it in chat. Anybody else want to tell me what has stopped them from going to the doctor? Fear, yes. Time, somebody said nervous. Yes, uh, the doctor can be, Brenda, you are right. Very nervous, right? Cause you, you in the back of your mind and this, I'm guilty of this. I Googled all my symptoms on, um, on um, what is it, WebMD, and now I'm dying of some fungus that is only in Asia, and I think that I'm dying from it. And so, yes, don't Google your symptoms before you uh, go to the doctor. Taking care of your kids, you are absolutely right. If you have little ones at home and you need a sitter, it is very hard to get to the doctor. Or if you have to take them to and from school, you might be exhausted by the time you get them kids down to the schoolhouse. The fear of getting bad news, yes. Um, but I think for me now, there was some time, um, Lizette, when I would be like, I don't want to hear any bad news, so I won't go. For me now, because I've seen women who have flourished through breast cancer, flourished through cervical cancer, flourished through other cancers, that I would rather know and know that I have the resources and the support and get through it than die miserably. So, yeah. I think, um, because now I'm learning that you can survive things that I thought you would never survive. Over the last 10 years, I've learned that I've seen people survive. I've seen people who they said, um, you know, you're not going to make it, make it. Um, I always tell, there's a funny story um, about one of our breast cancer survivors. They told her that her breast cancer was so aggressive that she wouldn't make it over six six months and she told the doctor to get out the room because he was bringing bad vibes in there and that he didn't get to tell her how long she would live. 25 years later, she's still living. And she said, you don't tell me how long I live. So that's what we can also say. If someone gives us bad news, we say, you don't tell. And she said, I said, get out of here, get out of here. And she said, you throw them out. She said, they don't get to tell us how long we live. And 25 years later, she's still living. So um, we have to think about that too, because she said if she had to process that, then she would have allowed herself to die in six months. You have to say that's not true. Not so. so every woman counts. What do we offer? We offer free cervical cancer screenings for people 21 and older. Those plus signs are older. Free breast cancer screening for people 40 and over and free breast cancer testing for any age with symptoms. And we have providers in your neighborhood and there are appointments every day and help in different languages. So you can't say that you can't get there because we have providers in your neighborhood. We have appointments every day, all day long. And there's help in different languages. So there is somebody who will speak your language. We can find you someone who speaks your language. So there's no excuse for you. And some of these clinics provide rides. Now, I know that um, because of COVID, a lot of places aren't providing rides, but some of them do provide rides. So who can use Every Woman Counts? Eligibility considers people who live in California have no health insurance or, or Medi-Cal, can't afford their insurance payment. So um, 
if your insurance payment is $5 and you tell me you can't afford that, I can't tell you that you can or can't. So then you just have to tell us, like, I can't afford that $5 and you may can't. After you pay rent, a mortgage here in California, you can't afford anything. So you might not can. So then um, that's, and you just tell, you have to say that and then we can help you out. Our low income are of screening age. So there's two ways to find a provider. You can call the 1-800-511-2300. We speak English, Spanish, Mandarinian, Cantonese, Korean, Cambodian, Khmer, Hmong, I'm tearing these up, Russian, Tagalog, Farsi, Arabic, Armenian, Hindu, Japanese, Punjabi, Thai, Latina and Vietnamese, okay? So we um, so there's no excuse. No matter what language you speak, we can help you. Because I have had someone tell me, oh, I speak, um, it was um, Cantonese. And I was like, oh, they, you can still. And so she had to go get her mammogram because she tried to get out of it and tell me that there was not going to be anyone there who spoke her language. So she had to go get her mammogram. So yes. And you can, you don't even have to call us. If you don't like to talk to people, you can go online and click the link, HTTP DHCS and um, put in your, um, and select, I attended an EWC class and put in your zip code and they will send you, email you three providers. You don't even have to talk to anybody. You don't have to tell nobody your business. And if you want um, more information, you can call Jennifer Met. She is online. She's giving you $10 Target gift cards at the Every Woman Counts program for Los Angeles County. Her number is 310-775-1276, jmets at healthcollaborative.org. All right, are there any questions? Any questions? So let's talk about what if I have breast or cervical cancer. So finding and treating cancer early lives. So if your provider finds cancer, you will go to the free breast and cervical treatment program. Cancer treatment depends on the type of the disease. Talk with your provider about your choices. And if your provider finds cancer, get a second opinion. Always get a second opinion, okay? So summary of healthy steps. So we know we have to do what? Know your family history of cancer and ask a provider for your recommended screenings. So what are our recommended screenings? We want to have a mammogram at the age of 40. Thank you, Lizette, for doing your survey. Thank you, Brenda, for doing your survey. Um, you guys are going to get those Target gift cards, huh? Um, age 40, you want a mammogram. When you are 21, you want um, a cervical screening. Okay. Get to know your own body. And if you notice changes, get checked out by a provider. So if you think something is wrong and you have to go to the doctor, go to the doctor. Even if they say nothing's wrong, I'd rather for you, for the doctor to tell you nothing's wrong versus you go, you wait it out and then they can't save you, okay? Get regular medical checkups for breast and cervical cancer screenings. And then for more information, there's the Every Woman Counts program again. And that is our um, presentation. Are there any questions? Lizette said, yay, she's done the survey. Are there any questions? Actually, I have a question. Um, yes. It's my understanding that men can get breast cancer also. Yes, so men can get breast cancer. So for every one in 100, men can get breast cancer. Um, I know two breast cancer survivors who are men, and one is a millennial. He was diagnosed with breast cancer in his 30s, and he found an ingrown hair, and it was breast cancer. It was not an ingrown hair. And then the other person, his pastor had breast cancer, and so he said that he had a, a, um, a um, wasn't a lump. It was like a round it looked like a horseshoe but it wasn't a lump and he said that his pastor finally decided to tell the congregation 
about that um, this ram horseshoe that he had. And he said, oh goodness, I have that same thing. And when he went to the doctor, it was inflammatory breast cancer. Yes, as a man. So yes, men do get breast cancer. We have people who, um, especially in the African-American community, under 40 being diagnosed with aggressive breast cancer, aggressive breast cancer. So that's why it is so important for us to take care of ourselves, to take one day out the year and take care of ourselves. The house can fall down. Your brother can lay on the sofa. I promise you all those problems will still be there when you get back. That one day is very important because if you don't take care of you, who's going to be around to take care of all the other people and their problems? Nobody. And they'll figure it out. They will survive without you. So take care of yourself. Um, Lizette, you have a question related to an IUD. I don't know if I can answer that, but ask me the question. Uh, hello. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I does that create a, like some type of cancer because it, yeah, I've been experiencing something like painful cramps even after my period. I don't know. I heard that it's it it also kind of causes kind of some kind of cancer. So yeah, Maybe I'm IUDs, getting the wrong information from some. Yeah, so research it. I always research, and then um, if you take birth control, any kind of birth control, it can increase your risk for cancer. But you have to look at what it outweighs. So I would suggest that you have a conversation with your doctor, okay? So you have a conversation because it could be the hormones in the IUD. It could be something else. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest that you have that conversation with your doctor, okay? Yeah, I would, I would, re yeah, I would, right. I would second that. I think that if yeah. you have any discomfort, if you right. have any pain, if you have any, like, um, breakthrough, uh, mm -hmm. spotting, you definitely want to talk to your doctor about that. There are different types of IUDs and not all of them right. are ideal for everybody. Yep. When it comes to cervical mm -hmm. cancer, we do see that, um, some IUDs do increase our risk for cervical cancer, whether that's mm -hmm. not, whether that's related to the actual IUD or the fact that oftentimes when we have an IUD, we're less likely to use barrier protection. protection. Right. So we're not using condoms. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to be exposed to the human papilloma virus a whole lot more than we would if we were using condoms. Now, if your IUD has a hormone related to it, that does increase our risk for breast cancer. So it all just kind of depends on what type of what type of IUD you have and the exact symptoms that you're experiencing. Right. But if you have an IUD, you should, I'm hoping that you're going in for routine screening and pap tests. And that pap test would find any abnormalities um, that they that they would be they'd be looking for those abnormalities when you go in. Right. And also remember that your IUD can move too. So mm -hmm. you would can move. So you want to talk to your healthcare yeah. provider about that. Yeah. Yes. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. Are there any other questions? We have two people who said their surveys are done. Lizette and Brenda. Did everyone get a chance to complete the um, survey? I've got... Yes, I completed mine. Yep. Okay. I got so one, two, three, four. I got five of you. How all many people do we have on? Completed. One, two, three, four, five. So we got and five. We've got everybody on here. So guess what? What? I'm going to put my cell phone number in the chat box. If you all send me your, if you text me, your address, I'll send you a gift card. 
all right yay we all get a gift card yay there are there are too few people to to do a raffle or a drawing we so all get a gift card so i all will get send a gift her card. even though she does she uh, knows where i live <laughs> And I know where she lives. I'm going to send her my address so I can get my gift card. So yes, we all get a gift card and we (laughs) get it to our favorite place, Target. So yes. So ladies, everyone is going to get a gift card today. So I like that. A gift for everyone on here today for um, participating in our um, presentation. Um, Are there any other questions? Any other comments? So if there are no more questions and comments, I will turn the floor back over to our gracious host. Well, I want to thank you both so much for doing that presentation and being like, Oprah, you get a gift card. (laughs) And you get a gift card. card. Yes, everyone gets a gift. (laughs) Yay for us. I love that. I love it. Uh, Before we go, I wanted to give you some information. We are a COVID-19 health, uh, we, we teach about COVID-19 and our message for this week, uh, help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases like COVID-19, uh, avoid contact with people who are sick, cover your cough and sneeze with a tissue, then throw the tissue in the trash, clean and disinfect frequently, touch it, touched objects and services, stay home when you are sick, except to get uh, medical care, wash your hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds, avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Uh, in addition, COVID tests are available for free, regardless of immigration status. When you we do have that right and we keep our communities safe. Yes. Uh, Once again, this uh, presentation is presented by the Green Foundation and the Green Foundation provides a lot of support for COVID-19. You can scan uh, this if you want some additional uh, information or it's on our website. Uh, Stay calm, stay informed. Uh, the community uh, resource guide. Uh, they have food, utility help, rent helps, health insurance, gift cards, uh, Act Now Health Education. So that and we love is Ernesta Wright. Green yes, foundation. Yes, and we love Ernesta Wright. We can call her and ask her for anything that she does it for us. Yes, 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 yes. So there are resources available regardless of hmm. whatever status you have. We don't want people. Uh, feeling alone. And once again, uh, this is the Wooten Center, and we invite you back every Monday at six o'clock. We have a number of different topics, and if there is a topic you're interested in, uh, you can go to our website and and, uh, send us some information also. So I know uh, you have lots of things to do tonight, but we appreciate you spending an hour with us. And once again, Jennifer uh, and Andrea, thank you so much. And, You're welcome. Uh, you know, we'll circle back around because yes. we have to get the message out as often as possible. Um, this uh, program will be recorded. So if there's friends or family members that you would like to refer back to it, uh, you can check that out on our YouTube page. Yes. So once again, thanks everyone. And um, I'm going to stop sharing so we can see everybody's faces and and, and say bye for the evening. And thank you bye. all. Once bye. Again. bye. Bye. Also, if anybody is interested in having us speak to another group, we're, we're available. So um, same number that I put there in the chat box, you can text us and schedule another presentation. Yes. Oh, and I forgot, um, we do have a a gift card and it's going to the first person that came, which is Robin Davis and Mm -hmm. also uh, Lizette for 
asking some wonderful questions. So before you go, if you can put your email in the chat so we can email you your gift cards. Oh, there's a choice between Starbucks and um, Chopper Juice. So uh, Ooh, thank you. <laughs> so uh, was that which one did you want? I'll, I'll get Starbucks. Okay. <laughs> thank you. And Robin? Hi, do you have, a, I'm sorry, can you hear me? No, I didn't hear you. Uh, do you have another Starbucks? Starbucks, that, that's perfect. Thank you. Thank you. So I'll see you next week. Thanks. All bye right. Bye. 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 Congratulations. Bye-bye. Goodbye, everyone.